keep in mind, this took place before any of the major riots. Before anyone started looting Target and setting auto zones on fire, literally the entire country, right and left, was on board and against what happened to George Floyd and thought it was murder. So when you say you weren't being heard, being heard by who exactly? So you can imagine my surprise when I got older and found out that I am discriminated against on the basis of my skin color and college admissions. Why? Because I'm Asian. Wait, what? So I've been getting some heat about my video on the name Kansas City Chiefs. This person says, well, no other race or ethnic group in their culture is culturally accepted as mascots. But dude, literally, what are you talking about? Minnesota Vikings, Boston Celtics, Dallas Cowboys, New Orleans Saints. And lastly, did you know that uh, President Trump and Republicans are uh, currently considering a bill that basically overturned the Equal Pay Act and um, sort of allow like, men to be paid more than women if they want. Um, what, 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 like, what is your opinion on that? That's sick and that's twisted. And I don't understand why, I'm gonna use you as an example, why this would be better than this, or this would be- Did you just assume my gender? Superior, that, I did, I'm sorry. Vince Guy was a political commentator. He was rated in Newsweek Magazine's top 12 conservative up-and-comers, and you can find him on Twitter and Instagram at the Vince Dow and Vince Dow on YouTube. Vince, thanks for joining me. How are you today? Good. I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good, man. It's been a while since we spoke, but why I brought mm -hmm. you on is because I think more people, especially young people, need to see the type of stuff you're doing and, frankly, yeah, see yeah. how popular your stuff has become, especially on stuff like TikTok and Instagram. Now, mm -hmm. First and foremost, I think the first thing I saw related to you was you were harassed by your schoolmates, basically for your views. And you actually yeah. spoke to uh, my guy, I'll call him Will Witt about it. So I want to show that video of you talking to Will Witt, and then I want to get you to elaborate on exactly what happened after that. Can we get to that, Justin? But some people at your school, or I, I believe they were at your school, yeah. not, didn't, yeah. didn't really like you very much. And they... No. they they took some action. What ha what happened to you? Okay, so I, I guess we'll start from the top. So obviously, as we know, the rioting, it, it, I mean, it, it might seem like common sense to older people that rioting and looting is bad, but to, to my generation, it's really not. Like, to be quite frank with you, a lot of leftists in my generation are okay with all the, the terrorism and the violence happening in our streets right now. And all I've basically been saying, I actually think this is the least controversial I've ever been in my life, or my political life at least, all I've basically been saying is that this looting is bad, this rioting is bad, it's especially bad for communities of color, and I've just been condemning it. And then starting like last week, this group of kids from my school just started mobbing me. Like I don't even know who these kids are, like they don't even share classes with me, I barely know them, like I see them around school sometimes, but I don't really know who these kids are. They started mobbing me, harassing me, like they, they, they called me all these names, and I'll, don't get me wrong, I can take name calling, right, it's, it's just whatever. But um, they spread false sexual rumors about me with another girl. And that other girl got very like hurt by what happened, you know, with all that too. And she was like, what the hell's going on here? Um, and it, it just kept escalating. And the thing is, I never even provoked them. I never insult them. In fact, they don't even follow me. So that means they've just been stalking me and just leaving all this hate on my post. And you look at some of their Twitter feeds, their entire Twitter feeds are dedicated to me, to just to me. Like they're just tweeting about me and, and just saying all these things about me. Now, this is a really weird age we're living in, Vince, where people are now picking on each other for their political um, <laughs> views. And there's a bunch of tweets that you showed in the past um, when this was happening. Um, we've got one where they're saying the email Dr. Guy or whoever this professor is. And one of them also mentions oh, how, yeah. how you were number one in your class and your classmates didn't like what you were saying. What was it exactly <laughs> that they didn't like that caused this reaction? So... I, to be honest, don't know exactly what it was, mainly because they don't really know what it was. Like, they, they, they just don't comprehend stuff and things. So they, they just knew that I was a conservative and that I was speaking out against BLM and especially speaking out against the rioting and looting and just destruction of all the foundations of Western civilization that were occurring last summer. And that was enough for them. You know, I they, they really didn't have anything in specific where they were like, this is what you said wrong or, you know, this is the video where we were we were really pissed at. They just knew like I had these views and were just attacking me for that. And I don't really know, and I don't think they really know because they're they were not the brightest kids. But you know, 
So did it stop to, there sure. after it was publicized? Did the school do anything about it? What was the aftermath about that? And then we'll get to the, the video that I think uh, set them off. Okay. So the school, so uh, luckily, at least for me, this I was at least relieved that the school didn't take action against me because that was what I was honestly, and because you know how public schools are. That was honestly what I was more worried about. Like I knew retribution for these kids wouldn't happen like to any extent except for the kid who at school who doxed me he actually got in trouble uh with the school district and i don't know how that ended but i just know it was pretty bad for him um but i was very at least pleased that the school basically sat me down and told me like no we we, we can't we're not going to and we can't you know punish you for your political views that's your free speech and um if you're the valedictorian by the end of next year then you're going to make the speech regardless so i was i was at least pleased to see that happen okay and then for anyone who thinks uh, maybe you know vince is a young guy he's probably not telling it telling the full story here i want to play what uh your vitriolic and hateful comments were okay. about rioting. Let's go to okay. that. So a lot of people who have been defending riots have been saying it's the only way we can be heard. Really? Rioting was the only way for you to be heard? Is that why within hours of the incident reaching the national spotlight, the city of Minneapolis was already neck deep into an investigation of the incident? And all four cops were fired? And the President of the United States ordered the FBI and the Department of Justice to get involved in the case at an expedited rate and make it their top priority, which is highly unprecedented and rare for an incident of that small scale at such a local level. Really? Keep in mind, this took place before any of the major riots. Before anyone started looting Target and setting auto zones on fire, literally the entire country, right and left, was on board and against what happened to George Floyd and thought it was murder. So when you say you weren't being heard, being heard by who exactly? Because literally everyone, including the President of the United States, the highest person in the land, was literally condemning what happened. Now you guys have distracted the attention away from George Floyd and on yourselves. Now that's what I think happens in a lot of these things, Vince, and I want to get your opinion on that. Does a lot of this come back to, I want the attention, it's, yep. it's not even about what happened there, even no matter how Trump reacts, uh, we need a reason to be mad at him. Is it more of a, I mean, you're around these people every single day, I'd imagine, if your school's open right now. Is it a heightened level of, of self-sense of worth, so to speak? Yeah, well, you know, it's it, people do this, basically, kids do this to seek validation from other kids, right? It, it's it's sort it's sort of a virtue signal thing. And I actually, I, I heard I heard a great example of this, which is that, in, but it was, it was on the issue of mass, but it, it's sort of a great comparison, which is people see this stuff as nothing important other than a, a, a social status, right? Sort of, sort of a social virtue, and I think that's what you see these kids doing. It's like once people got on board to attack me, and once it was popular to attack mm. me, then you see a bunch of other kids getting on board with this stuff. These kids don't know politics; they don't know what they're talking about, you know. But they just know it's what these other kids are doing, and they'll get more popular. They'll get these positive comments, like people saying, "Yes, Slay Queen! Oh my God, you're amazing, Emily!" Right? They, they, they want to seek that validation from their peers and, and this is how they can get it. So it's, it's just, it's just overall just sheet mentality. And I, I think it, it, it goes to deeper to a problem in my generation, which is, you know, because we live in sort of such like this progressive secular, you could say society at this point, like in, in our history, right. A lot of kids have a hard time really finding like deeper meaning and finding validation. So, so they, they, they seek for shallow, uh, just, dumb ways to like sort of feel like they're important and, and you see it and stuff like this so for sure and it's always the emily's that, that get you <laughs> um not a lot of people are talking about or have continued to talk about this next subject and it's affirmative action especially as it pertains to asians which i assume yeah. you are identifying as but um <laughs> I, I actually identify as a black woman okay, okay that, black i'm glad we got that out in the open now native american that's fair that's fair and that's actually part of what i'm going to show next it has actually it has to do and i know this happened in harvard so i want to get your thoughts on it about where you are where it's grading asian students on a curve when they're trying to get into college or university and you gave a speech about a speech about this at a rally uh last summer so i want to show a clip of that and and give us the broader context after we see this but back then in a long time ago called 2012 seems like a long time ago to me i was taught in school that it was wrong to treat people differently on the basis of their skin color. So you can imagine 
So you can imagine my surprise when I got older and found out that I am discriminated against on the basis of my skin color and college admissions. Why? Because I'm Asian. Wait, what? So, okay, so, so, so my, first, my first approach, my first thought was the pragmatic thing, like maybe how can I get around it? So I was saying, thinking to myself, okay, so maybe I can pull an Elizabeth Warren, right? <laughs> I mean, hey, she's done pretty well for herself based off of lying to, about her race to colleges, okay? So yeah, maybe I'm one in 1024 Cherokee too, okay? If, if that's what it takes to get a job at Harvard Law School and make a bunch of money, I think we're all one in 1024 related to Elizabeth Warren, right? So I see you, you've memorized that joke now. So what is the system in your district? I noticed you ref did reference Harvard there. How does the grading actually work? Because when most people think of affirmative action, they think helping black people get into a school that normally couldn't afford. I think that's how the layman would normally interpret that. So how does the grading on a scale work against uh, Asian applicants? Well, are you talking about like college admissions basically, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, when you apply to every base, they, they technically say there's no racial quotas, but there clearly are. When you apply to colleges and universities, and I would argue this is even just in blatant violation of the 1964 Civil Rights Act, but most universities in America outright will say that we consider race and ethnicity as a factor in your admissions process. And you notice that this never works out in the favor of Asians, right? It, 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 hurt, it hurts whites, obviously, but it actually hurts Asians the most. Mm -hmm. And the core reason behind this is because Asians are, uh, they're, they're, they're called the inconvenient minority for a reason, right? This Asians as basically existence in Western society debunk every argument of white privilege, white supremacy, white power structure, right? Because you look at this, Asians are, the, are despite being a minority group and a minority group historically that's not been treated well in America or in the West, have the highest income out of any ethnic group, right? They they get the best SAT scores, best grades in school, right? And so as a result of this, in, in the university system, Asians get treated the worst, right? Because we're, it's hard for us too, because we're such a small percentage of the US population. So they try to keep it, oh, we got a quota, like, like because there's not a lot of Asians out there. But the thing is, when you look at who is scoring the best on all this stuff, most of the time it's Asians. And so as a result, Asians just get, get, get the worst of all of this, right? Like they, they we get, <laughs> every try to apply, it's like 10 times harder. I think there've been, there been studies and research done, like Asians have to score 150 points higher SAT to be treated the same as a black student, right? It, it's, it, so we basically have to face straight up systemic racism in America. And yet none of us complain about it because as our parents always tell us, it's our fault that we fail. So. <laughs> We're, uh, what I'm confused about is how is it decided which Asians? Because like, if, if you're taking somebody who's from Japan, that's a much richer country than a Loatian or a, a, someone who's from Vietnam. Are they, class true, yeah. are they classifying right. all Asians as one? I mean, in the UK, they call them people from the Middle East Asian sometimes. Is there any denominations of type of Asian countries? Or are we just, again, swathing people? In an attempt to be unracist, we're now swathing an entire continent of people into one category. Does that make sense? Yeah, from my, from my understanding, um, because when you apply to college, you just put down your race, right? Not your ethnicity necessarily. So usually just your race. And so, yes, you're absolutely right. Um, in most cases, unless there, you they have a specific question, but I don't think all schools do. In most cases, uh, Cambodian, right? Who's someone who comes from a much poorer country than like some, you know, like you said, a, a South Korean or a, a, someone from Japan, right? They ultimately get treated equally. Yes. And, and, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty racist when you think about it, but the left does this a lot. If you notice they, they will lump entire races that are very actually diverse and different into one group. And you see this like, you know, with native Americans, right? It's like, you're talking about a, a very diverse group of people, so many different tribes, basically across the country, they all have these different cultures. And yet you notice for the purpose of social justice, it's all lumped into this one singular conglomerate where like, it's all the same. And I guess the same thing is true with agents, right? It, it, they're all, you know what? Since on average, they all make more money than the whites, uh, let's all treat them the same. Of course. And you mentioned cultural appropriation there. Uh, uh, I want to get into 
get into that with you because this is something that you've been attacked for again. It seems like you've been attacked for everything at this point and, and you're already so young. Crazy. Specifically, this was <laughs> pertaining to uh, sports mascots and you had a really good vid video about this, I thought. Um, and this comes close to home here in Canada. Uh, and so I want to play that and then we'll, ma we'll maybe have a meeting of the minds on that. Go ahead and play that one, Justin. So I've been getting some heat about my video on the name Kansas City Chiefs. This person says, well, no other race or ethnic group in their culture is culturally accepted as mascots. But dude, literally, what are you talking about? Minnesota Vikings, Boston Celtics, Dallas Cowboys, New Orleans Saints. Oh, and let's go down to college mascots too. USC Trojans, UCF Knights, Notre Dame Fighting Irish. I'm surprised nobody has called this mascot racist yet, but it's probably because it's a white guy. Oklahoma Sooners, UCSB Gauchos, UPenn Quakers, Louisiana Monroe Ragin' Cajuns, West Virginia Mountaineers. If you want to consider Aztecs separately, San Diego State Aztecs. And no, the name Chiefs is not mocking Native American culture. Chiefs are people of power, wisdom, and strength. It's a positive representation. Nor is it different from any of these mascots. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was just writing down during that the ones that you didn't mention as it Washington Redskins, obviously now Washington football team, Syracuse Orangemen had to change their team to Orange. And I completely forgot about all these college uh, team names. Now, mm -hmm. what happened up here was there's a football team in the terrible, terrible Canadian football league called the Edmonton Eskimos. And they actually changed yeah. their name recently because it was too offensive. Their sponsor of their stadium thought it was offensive. But when they pulled people who are Inuits, so natives from like the really cold climates in Canada, 78% of them were against the name change. And when they created the name, uh, the Edmonton Eskimos, it was actually in conjunction with the very tribe that they were naming it after them. So they've had a close relationship with that same tribe. My question to you is, what is the reaction from people when you point out that there's Geez, 50 other teams for about other ethnicities, and then they're complaining about the Kansas City Chiefs or the Redskins. They always try to make some type of excuse for it. So let's go over some of the excuses they make. Number one, they'll say things like, uh, well, the Knights are not an ethnic group. And my response to that is the Chiefs are not an ethnic group either, right? Like, because they, they said these things. It's like, you said Knights, Trojans. Those are cowboys. Those are not racist. Those are not ethnic groups. I'm like, dude, Kansas City Chiefs is, is the same thing. It's a role in Native American society that some people held, and it's kind of like a cultural reference, right? Same story. Same exact story with Knights. That's a role traditionally that was held in past European white societies that is, is, is a cultural reference. So that, that that's one thing. The other thing is they tell me that I have – just no authority whatsoever to speak on the issue of Native American issues because I'm not Native American, to which my response is I'm actually one in 1024th Native American. Mm -hmm. Okay. And my, my evidence to that is my, uh, my, my, my grandma told me I had high cheekbones and <laughs> I published a, a, a powwow chow cookbook, right? Um, Wait, did Elizabeth Warren have a native cookbook or was that, a, did you make that up? No, that is that is that is actually something. Oh my she god, did. we're gonna have to put that up on screen. <laughs> <laughs> you can Google that. Um, and, and then you know another argument I guess I hear is that uh, it's offensive, right? It's it's an offensive appropriation. I'm like, I, I I guess I can kind of understand the Redskins, although I'm against changing any of those names because literally once they start figure realizing they have the power to change names, they're gonna change everything, and uh, I, I I'd rather not. But you're talking about chiefs here. You know, that, that is a positive representation. Chiefs are the leaders of these societies. Chiefs are, you know, people of power and wisdom and strength. How much better can you get than that? I mean, I, I, I don't understand what these people really want. And I, I think you made a great point about the, was it the Edmonton Eskimos? The same story down here. We have the Florida State Seminoles. Mm -hmm. And that name is actually, you know, the Seminole tribe actually like works with Florida State University. And I think, I think, the, their mascot is like an actual person from the tribe. And I guarantee you it's not going to matter because woke white suburban liberals from California, you know, they know, but they know better. They know what's best for the Seminoles, right? Not the Seminoles themselves. They, they are the saviors. Right. So, <laughs> In fact, that happened in my high school. Our high school mascot was we were the Redmen. We voted, we had to vote to change it and we became the Golden Knights. So it's pretty accurate to exactly what you referenced there. Shout out to but my high are, school O'Neill. But, you know, this is the thing is that they're basically setting the standard now that only white 
cultural references and white people can be represented by mascots. So these are people who always cry that minorities are underrepresented in culture. And yet at every turn where they try to represent minorities and minority cultures in, in, in mainstream culture, they get mad at it. So if we're going to take them all out, then what's going to happen? I agree. Only white cultures are represented in the culture. And that's, I thought that was the opposite of what they want, but I, I guess not. I, I think that appears to be if you, like the plan, if you will, for things like Aunt Jemima and Uncle Ben. So, I mean, Aunt Jemima mm -hmm. was a celebrated individual who's one of the first black millionaires in the United States. She was like an actress and a spokesperson for a lot of different things. And all of a sudden you're erasing her from history. So what, so that you can feel better about uh, <laughs> a syrup <laughs> bottle? It doesn't seem to make any sense. And I think that there might be uh, something more to that argument. But this is going to be the end of our YouTube segment, Vince. We're going to go behind the safety of the paywall where you can know, well, maybe you will be able to culturally appropriate there. And if you guys want to watch the full segment, go to rebelnewsplus.com and you can sign up right now for eight bucks a month. What are we going to be talking about, Vince? We're going to talk about him posing as a feminist at rallies and posting pro a progressive <laughs> page that actually had people sending me images from saying, can you believe that people are posting this stuff online? So we're going to get to that, rebelnewsplus.com, everybody. Thank you for watching Andrew Says. If you want to see the full uncut version, go to rebelnewsplus.com and sign up today so you can see the entire episode where we talk about topics we can't show you on YouTube. They'll ban us.